Hi there, I uh, just want to show you the Fourpos installation process. Um, on the screen you'll see there I've downloaded the CD Fourpos, which is our new uh, greatest installer. So let's just go through the simple process first of all. I'm just going to double click on it and it will prompt me and say do you want to allow this program to make changes to your computer. Obviously select yes. The screen will come up with the uh, extraction option. And as you can see there, it will clearly show you all the different steps and what we suggest you go through and read through. This will make your life a lot easier. Um, so spend a couple of minutes and go read through it. All right, so I'm going to click on install for now. It will extract all the different files. Once it's extracted all the different files on your system, it will pop up a screen that says, Welcome to the 4 Pods Setup Prerequisites Wizard. The reason why it's doing that, we've got many different versions of Windows running out there. Uh, from Windows 7 to Windows 10, this installer will run on. It will also run on the Windows XP um, operating system for terminals. In other words, your second, third terminal uh, in the system. It will not allow you to install the server, in other words, the main computer where the database is stored, on an XP PC. So if you do have a Windows XP PC, rather upgrade or change it to a different PC with Windows 7 or better. If you're running Windows 7 specifically, please ensure that you're running Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or better. Um, the important part is that it cannot install on uh, just a Windows 7. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll give you the quick uh, way of doing that. Uh, click on Start, go to Control Panel, go to System. And under system, it will show you which Windows you're running. So on this computer, I'm running Windows 7 Professional. That's good. But specifically, Windows Service Pack 1. That's very important. All right. Uh, lots of other ways to do that. Uh, but for me, that works. All right. So once I'm happy with this, I'm going to click on Next. Now the question is, is it the main computer, the first computer, the server machine? Lots of different ways of calling it. But it basically tells us that this is the machine where the database is going to be stored. Uh, where the 4 pass installation is going to set up the domain controller that will control everything and so on. All right, so 4 pass installation for a server, I'm clicking next. Obviously, if it's a terminal, you would have selected the other one, not in this case. There must be at least one server computer, one main machine. Uh, lots of documentation about the licensing. Obviously, if you've only bought one license, that license will be used on the machine that will do the point of sale transactions not the back office, not the computer in the office, uh, anything like that. All right, and now it's um, uninstalling the old 4POS version, first of all. So it doesn't matter whether you've got an old version or a new version or a version 15 or a version 14 or 13 or any number. 4POS started in 2005. So 13 years later, there's obviously been many, many versions. We still get customers at phone us with version 9.6, which meant 2009. In other words, literally nine years ago that they're still running successfully without a problem. All right. System will pop up and say, please correct your regional settings. Even though you might think it's correct, do yourself a favor. Go through the steps and double check it. Make sure it's set for the proper country that you're in, proper language. If you're in South Africa and you speak Afrikaans, please don't leave it on Afrikaans because it creates other problems in terms of regional settings and so on. The SQL at the background you can see is actually running through now. It's creating a new pricing file, a new Waitron file, um, and so on. And in the front foreground or the front of the screen, um, I still have other installs going on. Let me just get back to my regional settings quickly, then we'll go through one by one. It fires up different installation processes uh, just to speed up the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to, just going to go to additional settings. Again, my computer has already been set up, but double check. Make sure your decimal symbols is a full stop. If you're not sure, click on there, highlight it like I have, and press the full stop button. Uh, and then the, the digit grouping symbol over there, in other words, what comes in between the thousands so on, important for you to put a comma in there. So again, if you're not sure what I always do, I just highlight it and change it in any case. So again, simple decimal position. I press a full stop, tab, tab, press a comma, uh, click on apply, click on OK, apply and OK. And that's your regional settings done. You now know whether it's correct. If you have bought a 4 pos uh, 58mm printer, um, the driver installer will automatically come up. All you do is you click on agree. Go next, you say which printer it is, a 58 or 80 mil. Those are the two models that we supply. 
uh, we do not bring in the 76 which is a dot matrix printer um, if you do have a requirement for a dot matrix specifically you can inquire then we can possibly bring that in for you all right no we don't want it to be the default uh, the default printer itself we can sp specify our usb ports uh, it should bring it up automatically if the printer is installed if it's not installed it will bring up the list uh, typically what it will be is it will be usb 001 all right so you can select it over there and then click on install and the usb printer itself uh, would be installed driver success thank you very much all right the four pass manual will pop up once the manual is popped up please again you know we've got a whole uh, list of instructions and and things uh, that we've made available for everybody um, some default keyboards uh, you know if you're going to be using four pass scan all the def the main buttons that get used uh, in the point of sale system how to avoid how to refund what the default passwords are etc etc um, you know how to do upgrades it's a comprehensive manual um, there's 300 plus pages in this registration process adding past terminals to it and so on so next to all the pluses there if you want to go get more into detail about four part scanning how what the default keyboard layouts are there's a whole list of keyboards all highlighted all the yellow ones are highlighted that will tell you what the main buttons are uh, that is important for you to do your sales f2 for cash up uh, sorry for cash f12 for cash up uh, exit application catches a lot of customers alt x to get out of the program some versions of windows 8 if you press alt x it goes to the desktop or a taskbar change it you can change it to shift x uh, it explains it there clearly how to change your keyboards most customers jump in immediately and say okay well how do i change my passwords well passwords are all in the back office again all right so if we go there's your default passwords you can see on the right hand side they all nicely clearly explained the default user id is default uh, password is password and in the point of sale the default is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero if you do want to change it again over there um, in the back office store setup and security whole list of functions and functionalities maintain employee details this is how you change your passwords all right and explains it in very detail and show you exactly what each and every option is on the system uh, spend some time there and make sure that you you set up your permissions and your securities correctly for your system um, in a nutshell uh, four pods has now been installed properly let's click a close there i'm going to leave the manual open for now uh, click on start open up the back office program um, the back office program is where we'll do all our maintenance and it's important that that's where we start the process first of all we want to do our registrations um, it'll tell me that a new data source that's a connection to the database has been created which is great um, then you can open up your back office program once the back office opens um, it'll ask you for your voucher number you'll type in your voucher number all your company details and so on in the manual we still say register later don't bother with that you can register now we've made lots of changes to importing databases that is not uh, going to influence your registry later for now again i am going to click register later because i don't have a voucher number that i want to use on this system and there's my back office system i can now go immediately and go and check my items and go and create some products and so on um, even if you're just using it as a demo system you can go and click on new stock item the list is blank because I don't have any preloaded items on the database um, and I can simply go and click on uh, new item and I can say uh, this is argument sake my item number one okay and go through the process I can enter my cost price in there let's say the item is 12 rand 12 dollars 12 quacha whatever this by the way uh, it is explained in very many other videos this is not your stock quantity that you have in stock this is how I'm buying the item this item comes in singles I don't buy it in a box or anything like that if you were buying in a box of 10 you will type in 10 in there all right just click on next you can type in your barcode number or scan the product directly from there exit and then go and type in the, uh, the selling price manually uh, you'll see that once you've installed the system uh, at the moment it automatically pulls it in at 15% VAT for South Africa 
If you're living in a different country, you're welcome to change it. Quite simple. I'll go through that now. I'm just going to make it 17 Rand round. As you can see, the whole system works on no decimal points entered. It will convert it automatically. Just quickly on that point then for the VAT. So on my taxes, I can just simply click on that, go to standard, and go and change it to whatever it might be. If you're in Mozambique, 17%. Uh, I think Botswana is still, and Namibia is still sitting on 14%. Um, all right, so I don't want to change that, so I'm just going to uh, change it back to my 15%. And that's my system. I could now go and do an update point of sale. Um, update all, update pause. That is just a process of getting the information from the back office to the domain controller uh, and to the 4 pass scan. So I'm going to then open the controller, which is the main program that controls the updates between machines. Customers that use it on a single standalone machine might say, but why is that? Uh, it's not important in my situation. Uh, we do have many customers that it runs multi-terminal systems. In other words, they've got 10 or 20 or 50 uh, machines. Uh, our biggest installation is 26 terminals. Um, we run customers from a turnover of 15,000 rand a month uh, in some cases up to 20, 30 million a month. Uh, this is in rands again. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of uh, maybe peace of mind about the software can work on small businesses and on big businesses. All right. So let me open up the 4 pass scan, which is a program that does the scanning and selling and retail environment. Uh, again, you can go and type in your uh, uh, password if you do have one. If you don't, either press enter or type in 12345678900. The system has been set up for a, a big display in the big, uh, bottom there. So if I go and ring up my item 1 that I just created over there, um, you'll see that it rings it up and it shows you the subtotal of it. If I go and ring up another item, um, it will show you the subtotal right now is 1899, which is also the due amount at the bottom. Uh, again, very simply to finalize the sale from here, I can either click on F10 over there or once you get to the final amount, you can uh, obviously go and do all sorts of things. You can go and press the star button and change the quantity to four. Uh, or if you made a boo-boo and you want to change it back to one, you can do that. You can go and press F9 for price changes, etc., etc. Okay, so let's go and finalize the sale as a normal sale. Again, you can either press F10 or alternatively... Uh, on the keyboard I mean or click on the F10 which is up to you you could also change the keyboard around for a retail environment uh, and a very fast high moving retail environment we typically do it the minus sign on the numeric keypad will become the subtotal the plus sign will become the cash the slash will become the void in other words cancelling a line so in this case I'm just going to type in 20 rand the customer is paying me cash so I can click on the cash button you want a receipt yes or no uh, for now, I'm going to say no. If you do want to reprint the transaction, Control P is how to reprint transactions. Two other menus on the system. Alt F12 brings up the alternate menu, as we call it. And as you can go and see, you can go and say print previous transactions from over there, or payouts, or cash ups, or whatever the case may be. There's also an, a different menu. Uh, Shift F11 gives you that menu. Uh, all of these menu options are available on keystrokes just to make it easier. The whole purpose of 4 pass scan is to let the customer, the cashier, not need a mouse or a key, uh, sorry, a mouse interaction with the whole process. So everything is keyboard based. It makes it much faster. They get confused if they have to sometimes click and sometimes move the mouse and then do this and that. So keep it simple, the mouse and the keyboard. If you don't want to use a normal 101 keyboard, you're welcome to use a get yourself a small USB 59 key keyboard, which you can buy at most uh, retail stores and uh, plug that in and just use the all your put all your function buttons on the numeric keypad which is more than enough um, in principle that is the new 4 pos installation you'll see we're running version 18.4.3 at the moment um, the version numbers is works uh, on the basis of 18 meaning 2018 uh, 4 meaning april and then the, the compiled version of um, for the month in other words Currently, we're sitting on version 18.4.3. Later in this month, we might go to 18.4.4. Next month, it will become 18.5. The functionality in terms of installations for 4Pos will now stay the same. 
So this is our final video in terms of installations, most likely for a number of years. Um, lots of other functionalities that you can go and play around with. Uh, under utilities, you'll go and see that there's uh, airtime registrations that you can work on. You can work on your preloaded databases for liquor stores and so on. Uh, you can initialize the stock. You can restore backups if you installed it from a different uh, system. We have a four liquor program, stock tech utilities, and so on. So there's lots of utilities. At any stage, you can go and uh, click on f help and go and view the help file, which is the manual that we've opened right at the beginning, etc., etc. Very strong, very powerful system. Um, we hope you enjoy it and uh, hope that you get the value of for your money that you spent on the software as quickly as possible. Any issues or problems you have, you're welcome to email us. We will try and assist with the email in terms of giving you direction to take, videos to watch, etc., etc. Uh, all our videos available on YouTube and on our website um, and on the DVD that you bought. So on the DVD, the manuals, the videos, everything else is there as well. Um, enjoy your 4 system and thank you for your time.